Hi, I'm Rick at Rick Turns, and today's video is... I'm going to do another vase today. The last one turned out pretty good. But, as people noted in the comments, it went from like this all the way down like this. It turned out really short. Got another piece of wood here. Um, there. Got this piece of, uh, this is a piece of sycamore. And, uh, you know, amazingly, this is anti-gravity wood as well. See, it's right here between centers, but let's just get this tail stock right out of the way. And uh, we'll move this over a little bit there. <laughs> See, this stuff floats, it's so light. As a matter of fact, when I finish turning it, I'll probably have to throw some pebbles in the bottom to keep it from floating away. Hey, go figure. Anyway. Uh, this is a piece of sycamore that I've got here. Fairly fresh, uh, maybe a month down. Not, can't quite remember when I got it now, but pretty fresh. It's about eight and a half inches in diameter, and it's about 15 and a half inches long. That's a pretty good sized chunk of wood. It would, it would even make a good small bowl, or several small bowls, actually. But, gonna make a vase here. It's not gonna be a 15 inch long vase, so I don't think there's any way I could hollow inside the vase all the way down to the end. But we'll see. Uh, all right, uh, let's get started. Bet you've already guessed the first step. Got to take this down around. So, uh, this is just in case I have to social distance. And, Make sure we're clearing the tool rest. We do have a little bit of a cutoff right there to get rid of. And turn it down to zero. That's about 650, and I'm going to leave it right there. This is a one and a half inch spindle roughing gouge. That's that little branch cut off. thing I'm going to do before I shorten the log here because it's four or five inches too long. I'm going to cut a tenon down here to fit this chuck right here. This is my um, Record Power SC4 chuck. And I've got the 75 millimeter uh, deep and strong jaws on it. You can tell they definitely look strong. Okay, I've got my piece of wood. As you can see, I chopped off a big old chunk off the end there. And uh, so it's down to <laughs> ready to turn size. This is record SC4 chuck with 75 millimeter jaws. Let's get that tight. And okay, I'm going to take down the diameter some before I start shaping it.
right, I am ready to start the hollowing. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is use this drill bit here, which is on an extension rod to drill down as far as, as deep as I want to go. If you take a look at that right there, uh, that's right to the gripping point of the jaws of the Jacobs chuck. It's only coming right down here. Got the lathe running at about almost 300 RPM. That's as fast as I was gonna go with this. And now I got a lot of drilling ahead of me. And come down to the point where got about, well, almost all of the bit in there. And now this is a one and a half inch hole, so I can actually go up to it right about here before I have to stop and do something different. So what I've got to this edge right here is nine and nine and five eighths inches. So if I go out here to nine and five eighths, I'm right down here with about an inch left at the bottom. Now that's uh, really thicker than I want, but on the other hand, I can't go much deeper with the drill bit. About the only thing I can do is extend it a little bit out of the chuck here. And that's it. We're ready to begin the real hollowing now. I'm going to be using a variety of hollowing tools. So when it gets dull, I just uh, switch to a different one. So these are my three standard scrapers right here. It's a one and a half, one and one half. They all do real good. I'm going to be using this, my homemade uh, hollowing tool. And finally, this is another tool I made, plain steel here. And this is, uh, pretty sure that's high speed still. I don't think it's carbide. I don't know, I can't remember. All right, let's see. I'm not gonna run the lathe too fast. That's just below 800 and that's where I'm gonna uh, start hollowing at. I'm gonna start off with my traditional one and a half inch scraper. A smaller end diameter turning tool. So I'm going to switch to this and I'm going to switch over and turn reverse. And I'm finding this little homemade tool. Uh, to do a good job at really tearing through the wood in there. It's not making a really fine cut, but it is doing a good job at removing the wood. Let me see. I'd like to see now, can I get a good view down in there? Probably not. Yeah, maybe we should get some of the sawdust out of the way. Now let's try again. See if I can.
And now it is sanding time. For the outside here, I'll be using this as I usually do, starting at about 180 grit. And uh, I think on the inside here, I'm going to be using a 2 inch uh, sander like this. And the sanding is all done. Now, I still got to take the mounting tenon off of here. And for that, I'm going to use my very big faceplate. Or actually, this is my fairly large faceplate. My very big faceplate is even bigger than this. So this has got a uh, faceplate ring mounted to it. And this is a uh, Record Power SC4 chuck with 50 millimeter jaws. And those jaws perfectly fit into the faceplate ring. And I'm gonna take a much smaller gouge, a 3 8 inch spindle gouge, just to get a little closer. And I do not want to go any closer than that. I'll cut through. It will fly off the lathe, and you'll hear the most horrendous cursing. Alrighty. Now, just got to remove this. Do a little bit of sanding on it, I think. I'm just going to sand this down a little bit. And then it'll be ready for the next step. Okay, I've sanded this down, and uh, you'll note, take a look right here, there's the pith of the log. Not a great idea to turn with the pith in, but in this case I would have pretty much had to throw the whole log away if I didn't turn it this way, because it wasn't really big enough uh, to turn something out of half the log without the pith. However, I have turned this fairly thin. The uh, sides here about an eighth and a quarter inch thin. The bottom's a little under a half inch thin. And what I'm gonna do now is just drip CA glue right on there and let it soak in. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the interior of it. All right, now for the interior. Interior, I don't have to be as careful. I just squeeze a bunch in there and roll it around some, get it spread around. I'm mainly interested right in the center where the pith is. Okay. The next step is wood burning again. So <clears throat> I've got a graphic here. I got this off canstockphoto.com and uh, there's a link to this graphic in the show notes below this video, should you want to use it. Seven bucks uh, for about an in inches, roughly 10 by 10. Uh, and that will enlarge or reduce pretty much whatever you want. And I've also got some uh, transfer paper here. This is not quite the same thing as um, uh, carbon paper. And that is good enough. I can make adjustments as I go along. So I am going to trace this whole pattern on here. And this could take a while. And yes, that's pretty good. A little thick. I wasn't using a real fine tip pencil, but then I, I didn't want one. Sometimes it can be very difficult to see the drawings. We are turning it around this way and start to burn it in.
Well, as you can see, the wood burning is done. And it actually turned out pretty good there. And this is the bamboo referred to in the title. <laughs> anyway, the bowl is still really wet. And, and you can tell from just by looking at the wood, it looks wet. So I've got two coats of walnut oil on here. Uh, it'll look a lot better in about a month or so when it dries out. And I'll put on uh, a couple of coats of wiping varnish. And then it's going to look a lot better. Right now it just looks kind of splotchy from uneven drying and everything. So this one turned out well. <laughs> mm -hmm.